have to get back to the United States right away. What's the hurry? I just found out this castle has $10 million in death duties. Well, doggy. And you want to hurry back and put it in your bank, huh? <laughs> you don't get the money. You have to pay it. How come? Because of the death of your distant cousin, the late Marcus. Well, I hear tell he was a pretty old fella. I don't hardly think it's my fault he died. <laughs> the $10 million is a tax which you'll have to pay if you stay here. You have to leave here and go home now, today. I'd like to talk that over with the rest of the family. How's that look, Mr. Drydale? Like $10 million. Well, thank you. Jed, let's pack up and get home. We don't belong in no castle. Oh, Granny, I love you. <laughs> what is it about this England that turns every man into a sexy genarian? <laughs> now, hold on. Ellie May ain't find herself a feller. And Jethro ain't find what he's after, neither. I'll find Ellie a fellow. Now, what's Jethro after? A dragon. <laughs> a dragon? <laughs> you promised Granny we'd have dragon jowls tonight. Yes, dragons are mythical. Jethro! 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 I wonder what he meant by that. I don't know. But I seen a picture of a dragon. And if that Jethro brings in one of them fire-belching lizards into my kitchen, He's going to clean it. <laughs> hey, Granny! Uncle Jed! Look at that darn fool riding around in his night clothes. <laughs> Let's go home, Jed. Now, wait, Granny. The boy sounds happy. Maybe he jumped a dragon too big to tote home. <laughs> Jump any dragons, boy? No, sir. Let's pack and go home, Jed. We can't, Granny. I done declared war on the next castle. <laughs> what? Yeah. Us and the folks that lives in that castle over the ridge is going to fight the war of the roses. What roses? The ones I rode through. <laughs> they sick their dog on me, so I challenged him. Now he's going over there and pillage them rascals. That's a feudal system. You mean we're going to feud them? Yeah. Is it legal here in England? To us castle folks, it's a way of life. <laughs> now, this is what I call a civilized country. <laughs> Now, hold on, you two. I didn't come 5,000 miles to go to scrapping with my neighbor. Oh, well, we can't get out of it now, Uncle Jed. I jumped throw down the gauntlet. Well, pick it up and pack it, because we's going home. <laughs> come on down, Ellie. We're leaving. But I ain't got me no night yet, huh? Never mind. Sire, when we go to feuding with the next castle, well, we'll capture Ellie and I. Then if he don't want to marry the dumb old damsel, well, we'll put thumb screws on him and torture him. There's going to be no thumb screw wedding in this family. Now, get back. <laughs> oh, please, Jed. We ain't had a decent feud since we left the hill. And it's going to stay that way. I ain't about to start no World War III twixt England and Bug Tussle. Now, get <laughs> I know we're all a bit down in the mouth about closing up the castle. Mr. Faversham, sir, where will we all go to? Well, Mr. Drysdale has suggested a debtor's prison. Really? No, 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 Mr. Clampett has arranged that we shall all get our back wages. Let it come down. Now, 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 let's give them a, a pleasant center. We leave it, Mr. Domo. Faversham, madam. Faversham to you, too. <laughs> yeah. Faversham, everybody. Here's another thing. You tell them goomers at the next castle that it wasn't my idea to crawfish out of our feud. My name. We can lick them any day in the week. And I'll bet you, our rabble can beat their rabble. Yeah. That's enough. You women folks get in the car. <laughs> Mr. Domo, I know how much you and Mr. Jenkins and these folks enjoy living in the castle, so uh, here's a little something for you. Thank you very much indeed, sir. On behalf of us all, ten million dollars. Well, that's what Mr. Drysdale said was owed on the place. Mr. Drysdale knows about this. Them stains on there is his tears. <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye, old friend. Goodbye, sir. Not you. The check. <laughs> well, Faversham, everybody. Come on, get through! Just dropped me off at Sherwood Forest. What are you talking about? Robin Hood was born of the purple. 
lived in a castle just like me. He was robbed of his birthright, and I've been robbed of mine. So I'm getting me some merry men and taking off for the wood. The only thing you're taking off is them red long john. Be careful, sire. Us merry outlaws praise on you rich folks. Get cool, boy. You better stay out of Sherwood Forest. Yeah. What the Briar Tuck hears about this? Yeah. <laughs> Jethro and Mr. Drysdale. Well, the truck's a bit slower than my car, Mr. Clavin, but, but they'll get home all right. Granny, you haven't said one word since we left the airport. Well, I'll say one now. Chicken! <laughs> I don't want you to start up about that feud. What feud? <laughs> Jethro got into a little ruckus with the folks at the next castle. How did that happen? They set the dogs on him for running dragons through their roses. <laughs> we could have whooped the tar out of him. <laughs> Captured me a handsome knot. I don't want to hear no more about what happened in that castle. Castle? The folks in England is probably calling it the chicken house. <laughs> Home of Lord Lily Liver. All right. Beverly Hills, yellow belly. Now that's enough. <laughs> Miss Jane? Oh, I'd better hurry back to the office, Mr. Clam, but apparently Jethro dropped the chief off back there. Well, we sure do thank you for picking us up. My pleasure. Good to have you home. Bye. Faversham. <laughs> Faversham? Oh, uh, that's what they say in the old country. <laughs> <laughs> Throw. Get throw. Get that stupid looking thing off the truck. You heard him. Get off the truck. <laughs> I'm talking about that throne and all this other junk. Junk? This here is trapping the royalty. We done left that royally nonsense behind us. Now, tote them suitcases in the house. You show me in the Magna Charter where it says that I got to tote suitcases. <laughs> Magna Charta. Don't you know nothing about English history? <laughs> old King Cole was a merry old soul till he had to sign that rascal. Lord, we is back in the United States now. You fetch them suitcases in the house and get all this stuff off the truck. Watch out, Tyrant. You're oppressing me. My royal blood is commencing to heat up. Like I tell you, or your royal britches is going to heat up. <laughs> Come on in and have a cup of coffee. Stand fast, Oak. You're coming to the forest and be one of my merry men. No, thanks. I don't feel merry. Well, he's going to rob the rich. Forget it. The government beat us to it. <laughs> come on, come on. Connect me with that castle. I done told you. The one with the dragon tracks. Who's the rose garden? Granny, what are you up to? I'm saving us from being the laughing stock of England. Now, Granny, I told you we ain't going back there and feud with them folks. I'm going to dare them to come over here and fight. <laughs> Excuse the call, ma'am. Get <laughs> Your Uncle Chicken is shaming us in the eyes of the whole world. Talk to him. I'm through talking to that tyrant. From now on, my longbow's gonna do my talking. Me and my merry men is gonna feud with the rich and feed the poor. And if you want to join me, get into a suit of Lincoln Green. I like the notion, but can't we wear Jeff Davis gray? <laughs> get a hold to yourself. We got company. Take Mr. Drysdale out to the kitchen and fix him a cup of coffee. I'll join you directly. Yes, do that. Oh, I got a tax angle on the castle. We'll turn it into a parking lot and take a business depreciation. <laughs> there goes the last shred of my birthright. The home of my noble ancestors. A parking lot. Help, save me. Billy <laughs> May, how come you're wearing your damsel in distress outfit? We ain't got no silo for you to holler from. Well, I know, Pop. I figured Bess and me'd climb to the top of the big elm tree out front. I don't hardly think I would in that pretty dress. And I believe I'd change partners, too. <laughs> Listen, if you want a fella, join me in the forest. I'm gonna be knee-deep and marry me. Hey, as good as night? Better. That armor ain't worth shucks for snuggling. I say I'm challenging you to a feud. 
A real gun-toting, sharpshooting fight, Kitty Phineas. Danny, I told you we ain't feuding that castle. I'm talking to Miss Drysdale next door. <laughs> right in front of her husband? It was him put me up to it. Here's a call, man. <laughs> <laughs> All in fun. Margaret loves practical jokes. <laughs> now, about that castle. I've got to get my money, I mean, your money off it. Right, Dale, I don't want it turned into no parking lot. Well, I have a better idea. A movie theater. Great tourist attraction. Like Brahmin's Chinese with footprints in the cement in front. Famous names like Good Luck Jed, signed Henry VIII. <laughs> I reckon you and Granny and Jethro is all a mite overwrought from our trip. Now, you get a good night's rest, and all these crazy notions about the castle and feuding and Robin Hood and all... <laughs> from Jethro. It says, uh, dear tyrant. I am off for the woods to rob the rich and buy back my birthright. From now on, we is blood enemies to the death. P.S. Please send my 50 cents allowance. <laughs> Robin Hood, uh, Bessie sees somebody a-coming. Not Bessie, little John. <laughs> anyway, somebody's a-coming. Pursuit, I hope it's a fat merchant with a big bag of farthings. <laughs> Me too, I'm home. Farthings is money, you dumb old mayberry. I'll <laughs> tie way later, rich rascal. <laughs> Your mother, I wouldn't like it either. <laughs> My folks still don't trust you. Daddy calls you that hippie creep. Baby, what do I have to do for that old grouch? I mean, I put on shoes. <laughs> Some nice threads. <laughs> Even cut my hair. Oh, it's just... This isn't going anywhere. Honey, you know how I feel about you. It's just for my folks, you're a little too far out. Baby, if I get any square, they'll stone me off the Sunset Strip. <laughs> I'm a changed man. Something. I feel great. Yep. I feel just. <laughs> What's the matter? Tell her, baby, what color is Cupid? Mm -hmm. Cupid, you know, that little cat that flies around making people fall in love. <laughs> well, I guess he's pink and white and has wings and a bow and arrow. I buy the bow and arrow, but he's red and black and wears a green hat. <laughs> Don't tell me, baby. I see the little grabber. Just look right up there. <laughs> now he's gone. And you want me to think you've changed. <laughs> Honestly, baby, I'm leveling. I saw a little... Huh? <laughs> that sign we saw, it said this was Griffith Park. Yeah. I mean, like, it wasn't Sherwood Forest. <laughs> <laughs> baby, that's Robin Hood's bag. Yeah, I know. But he's here. Robin Hood? That's nutty. Tell me, honey, I see the big grabber. What? <laughs> Do you see Robin Hood? Yeah. Wearing tights, great build? Yeah, yeah. Now, don't get jealous, honey, but physically, he's my kind of man. Mine too, baby, mine too. <laughs> Stay in and deliver. <laughs> I lay all the blame on you, Jed. If we had stayed in England and feuded with that next castle, like we were honor-bound to do, Ellie May and Jethro wouldn't be out there in the woods cold and hungry and probably being et by the wolves. If Jethro's hungry, you better worry about the wolves. <laughs> Ain't you got no feelings? Of course I got feelings. I called Miss Jane. She's on her way over here. We're going to pick up a Duke and go out and track him down. Duke's gone, too. Not that you need him. Just look for buzzards circling the sky. Now, Granny. 
poor Jethro. He wanted to stay and fight. But you snatched him from the castle and drove him out into the woods in shame. Oh, Lord. Why, boy? Oh, nothing. Well, it's you that will have to take his body back to the hills and tell his poor old Ma how her only son give his life for the honor of the family. Bill? That's enough coffee. How about a bite to eat? <laughs> Did you hear that? His nephew laying out there dying in the woods, and he's guzzling coffee and stuffing himself with food. <laughs> Innocent boy, born to the purple, robbed of his birthright, and forced to turn Robin Hood in the bloom of his golden youth. Oh, the shame of it. <laughs> the giant gizzard has cleaned me out. Wait till I get my hands on him. I'll show him who struck me. Be careful, Granny. That poor, brave, innocent boy was born to the purple. Well, I'm going to give him a few more colors, like black and blue. He even took my fresh smoke frog dance. <laughs> Yes, ma'am. Be right with you. I couldn't find Duke. Yes, Rose. Probably at him. <laughs> I'm sure the boys are starving. You can bet on that. <laughs> well, see you later, Granny. Wait. I'll get a club and go with you. <laughs> He likes to be called Robin Hood. Verily and forsooth, Robbie Baby. <laughs> what kind of freak out is this, anyway? I don't know what the big cat's got going, but the chick and the chimp are having a banana turn on. <laughs> you and little John keep watch. Hey, listen, if I untie you and feed you, will you promise to join my band? Sure. sure. What kind of music you play? <laughs> I need my band to marry men. We's fixing to take stuff from the rich and give it to the poor. Crazy. I'll buy that. There's plenty of Granny's Vittles in the basket. Plenty of what? Granny's Vittles. Sow belly, chitlins, marinated mud cat, and deviled hawk egg. That sounds pretty wild. Oh, well, what's really wild is the way she smokes crawdads. <laughs> you ever smoke crawdads, Robin Hood? Oh, sure. I knew we was on something. <laughs> Any crawdads in there? No, they's all gone. But I reckon I can find some along the creek. Oh, is that where they grow? Yeah. I'll go find some and help you smoke them. Uh, no, thank you. I'll try a few puffs. Buddy? Okay, okay, forget the crawdads. Hey, you're missing a real treat. Some other time. Jethro, I mean Robin Hood. Yeah? I see Miss Jane's are coming. Pa and Granny's with her. Oh, oh, they's come to get us. You run up to the road and stop them. Tell them you ain't seen nothing of us. Gotcha, Robbie. <laughs> you have to put some brush in front of the truck, and then we'll hide. Just the two of us? Well, yeah. Uh, Bessie and Ellie can hide in the tree. I mean, they can... By the way, is she your girlfriend? No, I don't date no ape. I mean the girl. Oh, that's my dumb old cousin. Good, good. Let's hide, hide. <laughs> Say, uh, maybe you can help me. I'm lost. Looking for a barber shop, are you? <laughs> oh, man, I'm looking for the zoo. It's just over the hill. Speaking of the zoo. You seen anything of a two-legged giant gizzard around here? Well, Granny, you'll confuse a boy. Are you Granny? Yeah. You the one who smokes crawdads? Yeah. How'd you know? Oh, I heard. <laughs> you got me on you? No. Jethro took them all. That's the boy we're looking for. He's dressed like Robin Hood, toting a bow and arrow. He's got a pretty girl, a hound dog, and an ape with him. Sounds groovy. How'd he get on that kid? <laughs> he means, how did it all start? Oh, uh... Well, we was at a castle in England, and Jethro went out in his night suit and chased some dragons through this rose garden. Tell me something, old timer. Do you smoke crawdads? <laughs> well, how about you? No, not I. Right. I'm glad you're driving. <laughs> Would you drop me off at the Sunset Strip? I gotta tell my friends about this. Certainly, well done. Thank you. I'm gonna get them to help you look for Robin Hood, huh? Sure, Daddy, sure. <laughs> tell me, Granny, how long since you smoked a crawdad? Smoked some this morning when we flew in from England. Did you use a plane? <laughs> of course. I'd like to hear your version of this Robin Hood story. Well, 
It really started back at the castle when that big dragon dog ate Cousin Marcus. Get me the script, baby. I gotta spread the word about Robin Hood and the Crawdads. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, it's a clear blue sky, but without you it's rain and a world full of noise. Your voice is my refrain day by day, every moment that I'm looking through. All I see, all I dream, all I need is you. I need you like the beat needs a rhyme, like a poet needs pain to bring his words to life. Every day, every night, through the struggle and strife, you're the light in my fight, the ultimate vibe. I need you like the beat needs a rhyme, like a poet needs pain to bring his words to life. Every day, every night, through the struggle and strife, you're the light in my fight, the ultimate vibe. Chief, where have you been? and Mr. Clampett around Griffith Park looking for Robin Hood. Robin Hood? Yes, bro. <laughs> you mean that nut actually took to the woods like he threatened? Oh, yes, Chief. He claims that leaving that castle in England robbed him of his birthright. So now he's hiding out in the park and the Clamperts are trying to get him back. Unbelievable. Not for Jethro. I mean, for them to want him back. <laughs> and besides, Ellie May's with him and also the family truck and a couple of Ellie's pets. <laughs> What ho, little Judd? See any rich merchants are coming? Hey, <laughs> Nate Marion, what did little John say? Well, he said he didn't see no rich merchants are coming. Ask him if he's seen any fat friars. But you and I ain't two fat friars. Talking about Granny's chicken? Oh, never mind. I got me one sad bunch of merry men. And yonder's the saddest. <laughs> A hound dog, an ape, a dumb old girl cousin that don't know a preacher from a bullet. Don't forget me, Robin Hood. Well, I don't know if I can trust you, Miss Stella. Your boyfriend deserted, and he was the only real merry man I had. But he'll be back. He left his wheels. Well, I'm afraid I'm going to have to hold you hostage. Really? If he don't come back, well, whatever was his is going to be mine. Oh, well, why wait? You're Robin Hood. This park is your domain. You're the law west of the freeway. Yeah? Sure. A man like you just takes what he wants. Even if she belongs to somebody else? Of course. Hot dog. I'm gonna take her. Crazy. <laughs> Is he for real? What's the matter, Miss Della? I don't think the Jolly Green Giant has all his carrots. <laughs> Hey, quit your stall walking. You know Jethro will be back quick as he gets hungry. Gets hungry? Look at that. <laughs> he must have toted off a hundred pounds of vittles. Yeah, but enough to last him till sundown. <laughs> I'm afraid for the boy. He's going to get hurt. He ain't going to get hurt. Oh, yes, he is. <laughs> I'm gonna put a hard wood finish on them red rompers of here. Just simmer down. After all, he's gonna get over this Robin Hood notion. Well, what about Ellie May? Out there in the woods, don't that worry you? Plenty that girl was born and raised in the woods. Besides, she's got old Duke with her and that dressed up ape. Eh? I mean, uh, the little one, not Jethro. <laughs> I'm too nervous to sit here. Let's go back to that park and find them. We ain't got a ride till Miss Jane comes back with the groceries. Oh, I forgot. Besides, maybe that buddy fell off finally. Oh. That boy we picked up in the park with the long hair and the bees. Oh, yeah. The one Miss Jane said was a yippie. I believe it was hippie. <laughs> hippie, yippie, he looked like a nut to me. He sure was friendly. Too friendly. Kept trying to find out how I smoke crawdads. You know, Granny, there is nobody can smoke crawdads like you. Well, he sure knew nothing about it. Kept asking me which end to light. That was the easy draw. He was just making talk. You're a pleasant fella. Days are going to get his friends from Sunset Strip to help find Jethro. Wake up, Mr. Keep it coming. Keep it up. Keep it going. Keep it going. 
gathered here to pledge allegiance to our new leader, the king of the cats, the pharaoh of the far out, Robin Hood. Well, I know we've had some great leaders in the past, Eric the Red, Buffalo Bill, <laughs> and the late, great Lady Godiva. <laughs> but hear me, friends, our new leader is El Supremo. This cat chases dragons. This cat flies with the birds and talks to the apes. This cat smokes raw dance. <laughs> and we are going to be his band of merry men. We're going to take from the rich and give to the poor. Yes. Yes. Look, on up the road. It's a bird. It's a plane. It's Robin Hood and Little John. <laughs> Follow him. Follow our leader. <laughs> I want to apologize. No need, Chief. That was the only sack left. It's you I'm apologizing for. Did you have to wear that silly-looking bird watcher's outfit? This is most appropriate for searching the woods of Griffith Park. It's pretty embarrassing in the supermarket. Speaking of the supermarket, Mr. Drysdale, what are we for all them groceries? Ah! Oh, no. No, no, please, please. Put away your money. It's all been taken care of. Miss Jane? He's right, Mr. Clappert. He deducted it from your account. I suppose you helped Granny put away the grocery. May I give her the trading stamps? <laughs> Look into a mirror, bird watcher, and you'll see a stool pigeon. <laughs> Mr. Clampett, I've got a great idea to get your money out of that English castle. We'll turn it into a car wash. But it's, it's all stone, it can't hurt the walls or floors, and we'll pipe the water in from the moat. Now, wait till you hear the name I've got for it. The Earl of Clampett's Classy Castle Car Wash. <laughs> Give me the crawdads next, Miss Jane. I want to put them where I can get at them easy. Well, I'm sorry, Granny. We went to five supermarkets, but none of them had crawdads. When is Beverly Hills going to catch up with Bug Tuttle? Who has been stands at all? Oh, Robin Hood. Who's the leader of us all? Oh, Robin Hood. Oh, Robin Hood. Robin, Robin Hood. Hey, come on, come on now, Robin Hood. Robin, Robin Hood. Hey. So fine, oh Maria, she's as sweet as cherry wine. Oh. I'm gonna do the boogaloo. Oh, little John. Little John gonna do the monkey too. Oh. have just entered your forest. Is it the sheriff of Nottingham and his men? No, one of them is your uncle the tyrant. One of them is uh, Granny the Crawdad Queen. One looks like a rich merchant, and the one driving is either a scout leader or Smokey the Bear's sister. How about meeting back here in one hour? Dandy. Granny, 
Ain't that a fancy hat to wear in the woods? This is what you call a camouflage. Jethro will think I'm a trailing arbutus. <laughs> You're ready? You take the north. What did you say? You take the south. Miss Jane will take the north. <laughs> Mr. Drysdale and me take the east and west, where the going is a mite rougher. Yeah. Jed, we ought to have guns. Granny, we want Jethro alive. <laughs> Not for him. Them woods look like they'd have bobcats and wolves and snakes in them. You know, somebody should stay here and guard the car. I'll volunteer. <laughs> These woods are perfectly safe. You'll not be lost there. That's not that. Guarding the car is a dangerous job. It might get stolen. I lock it. You lock your big mouth. <laughs> you going, Mr. Drysdale? No, you three can have the glory. I'll stay here and do the dirty work. <laughs> All right, see you back here. All right, now everybody beat the bushes. It ain't the bushes I'm gonna beat. I believe one can catch more flies with sugar. Robin Hood made Marion Little John. This is I, your friend. Maybe she's got something there, Granny. Could be. Yes, Rose. I got something for you, darling. Come and get it. <laughs> Wake up, rich merchant. You are the prisoner of Robin Hood and his merry men. Stand and deliver. Yes, Rob. That be me. It's Robin Hood and Maid Marion. This here's Little John. And Alan and Dale and Will Scarlet. I am Much the Miller's son. I am Sir Guy Gisborne. Where's my uncle, the tyrant, and the others? Cowards ran off and left me. <laughs> Whilst he's waiting, we'll tie you up and hold you for ransom. Yeah, please here to prey on the rich. <laughs> but, but I'm not rich. I'm just a poor bank president. Honest, I haven't got any money, but I know the people who have. Now, if you let me go, I'll finger my rich friends for you. <laughs> okay, it's a deal. Unhand it. Uh, thanks a lot, Robin Hood. Well, see you later. Tell Miss Hathaway I'll leave her car at the bank. Hold it, finger man. Hold it. <laughs> You're one of us now. That's right, Mr. Drysdale. You're joining my merry men. Yeah. Uncle Rob needs you. <laughs> hey, Robin Hood. Robbie Baby. <laughs> Almighty Leader. <laughs> Tell her, you chicks are turning the king of the cats into a lapdog. <laughs> El Supremo. It's me, the guy of Gisborne. What do you want, Sir Guy? A new merry man, Sir Finger. He ain't merry. Glooming up the glade, bringing all the cats down. Fetch that Saxon dog into my presence. Right. Hey, Sack Baby, our glorious leader wants to lay the law on you. <laughs> Behold, we have shared our threads with him. We have bedecked him with baubles, bangles, beads, and blossoms. He is the fairest in the fort, but he's still... Ah, shut up! <laughs> now, look, it's, it's bad enough to wear these hippie hand-me-downs and the rest of this garbage, but these creeps want to pierce my ears. We don't go for snap-ons, Daddy. Get away from me. You see, Robin, he is Sir Sad. I'm going to grant you a boon, Sir Finger. I'm going to give you some fitting raiments. Here. What is it? But they's the best threads I got. They's even good enough for me. Now go on, put them on. Now look, if you take uh, them, Our leader hath spake. Hie ye to yon bushes and gird thy loins. We're gonna let light through thy lobes. <laughs> oh, well. It's got to be an improvement. Pull the knuckle Novocaine, baby. I would have further word with our leader. Why don't you go away? Well, I plan a trip just as soon as Robbie comes through with the crawdad. What crawdads? The kind Granny smokes. Oh, yeah, yeah. I did promise to get you some. So you did, oh man of La Mancha. <laughs> Let us dream the impossible dream, huh? <laughs> okay. Let's go down to the lake. That's where you find them. Well, we'll help you look. Well, you gotta be careful with crawdads. If you ain't, they really grab you. <laughs> oh, lead us to the grabbers, Robbie. <laughs> Come on, there, our children. Come on. Oh, wow. It's light up time. <laughs> Seen anything of the young'un? Not a sign. Me neither. That's a good
Drysdale's gone. The wolves got him. <laughs> There's a lot of bare footprints around the car. The bears got him. I mean, the prints of barefooted people. The Indians got him. Oh, no. He probably just decided to help us look. Likely went that way, down toward the lake. Kid, don't forget my crawdads. Hi, doggies. I think I know how to bring our hog to trough. Now, Jethro is uncommon fond of Granny's smoked crawdads. I'll catch him. Granny, you go to smoking. And if that boy is within Biddle Smell and Range, which is about 20 miles, he'll come a-running. Brilliant idea. Now, spread out, everybody. We'll meet down by the lake. I appreciate this, Robin Hood, but I'd rather have my own clothes. <laughs> Where's everybody? Robin Hood! Briar Top! Should I? Maid Marian! <laughs> Come on, Fred, let's go back to the car. There's no Robin Hood up here. I thought I heard a voice. It's probably that kooky ranger. <laughs> I shot an arrow into the air and fell to earth I know not where. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Virginia, there is a Robin Hood. <laughs> Hold it, Robin Hood. Oh, hello, officers. Hi, Rob. Now put away the bow and the arrow. We're going to take a little ride. Ah, no, I'm not Robin Hood. I'm Sir Finger. I mean, Milburn Drysdale, president of the Commerce Bank. Oh, sure you are. Come down now. The sheriff of Dottingham wants to see you. Oh, really? Well, I guess you wonder what a nice fellow like me is doing in a place like this. Well, you see, I'm being held for rent. Really? Oh, by the wicked Prince John. No, no, oh, don't you worry. See, we have Richard the Lionhearted on our side. And we can give you the room right next to him. Now, oh, there's a lot of your old friends there. Caesar, Napoleon... Now, just a minute! Oh, no, 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 just relax. Just relax. You'll feel much better after they put you between those nice, wet sheets. Now, I am done! Oh, just a minute! <laughs> Who's this? That... Little John. I mean, Cousin Bessie. I mean, Cousin uh, Bessie? <laughs> you know, Fred, I think he ought to have the room next to Tarzan. All right. Hey. Well, howdy, Pop. Sit down here and meet my little friend. Yeah. That's a cute little rascal. It's a nursing bottle. Oh, it's Cousin Bessie. I got tired of playing Robin Hood and Maid Marian, so I come out here and found this little critter. Can I take him home? I don't hardly think his ma would like that. But I'm right glad to hear that you're ready to come home. You know, Pa, being out in the woods sure has made me homesick for the hills. Me too, Ellie. My dog is, I believe it'd do us all good to take a trip back to the hills. Yeah, we could go to the big fall festival at Silver Dollar City. That's a dandy idea. Granny'd like it, and it might be just a thing to get Jethro's mind off of this Robin Hood nonsense. Where is he? Oh, beyond the other side of that hill. I'll see you there directly. Now, uh, get that youngin' back to his mom. Yes, sir, Paul. I tell you I'm president of the Commerce Bank of Beverly Hills. Just ask my secretary. She's here in the woods someplace. Wearing a leopard skin. No, no, she's wearing a... Oh, forget it. Anyway, I was sitting in her car when these hippies captured me. Hippies? Yes, the woods are full of them. <laughs> Damn, those hippies do get into some weird outfits. I've heard of the flower children, but that one's gone to seed. <laughs> That's Granny. She can identify me. Her family has $60 million in my bank. Really? Yeah, it was 70, but they spent 10 million on their English castle. You're gonna like those wet sheets. <laughs> you rascal, you. I'm going to Mr. Drysdale. You see? He's no hippie. She's as normal as I am. <laughs> Wanna come with us, Granny? I can't. I'm going down to the lake to smoke some crawdads. Smoke some what? Crawdads. But first, I need a little pot. Come 
our glorious leader. And he is not empty-handed. Tell us so, Robin Redpants. Does yon sack contain crawdad? It sure does. <laughs> Got 15 of the rascals. Diggins, too. They're cool, it group, cool it. The guy of Gisborne will be the first to set sail up Moon River. <laughs> be careful now. Please grab her. Grab me, baby, grab me. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> See, I told you, that thing's alive. Sure. You smoke those all the time. You got a match? <laughs> what, too far out for us. Come on, flower children. Back to Squaresville. Back to the Sunset Strip. <laughs> Yo, my merry men. We're not that merry, Robbie. Hey, are you going too, Stella? Yeah, but you write to me. Next time you're out there flying among the stars, let me know what spring is like on Jupiter, Mars. <laughs> Let me go. See that? Yeah, must have been 15, 20 hippies. Should we hold on to this one or go after them? Let's do it the easy way. Let's go get the 20 hippies. Written for the sunrise out of the gray. Run, run, gotta get out, gotta find my route The city's a trap, but that there's no doubt Run, run to the end till I shout I'm free at last, what life's all about Lungs burning, sweat drips like tears Each step forward, outstripping my fears Got scrapers looming, maybe again till I shout I'm free at last, what life's all about Lungs burning Sweat drips like tears Each step forward, I'm stripping my fears Skyscrapers Pour the light, shock the light, sun clear Yeah, Thor, how long you reckon it'll take us to get back to Silver Dollar City? I figure about four or five days of hard drive. We gotta get there quicker than that. Yeah, the festival's fun, Saturday. Getting over the Rockies will take two days in this thing. Here, pour some of this in the gas tank. Oh, boy, hold on now. Granny, is that Mountain Dew? Yeah. And it do get you over the mountain. <laughs> do melt the engines. Good. We don't want to miss the festival. Everybody and his dog will be at Silver Dollar City come Saturday. We'll make it. Is Aunt Pearl going to meet us, fire? How about that, boy? You heard from your mom? No. But maybe there's a letter in this morning's mail. I'll go to the box and say. Hey, wait a minute, Ellie, that's my letter. <laughs> it sure will be nice to see Cousin Pearl again and all the rest of the folks back home. Jim Owen, Mitch Ford, and the Hershans. I hear tell Pete Hershan had a baby. The way I hear it, it was his wife. <laughs> <laughs> I guess that is pretty old, ain't it? That's older than both of us. <laughs> I sure hope Jimmy Driftwood comes up from Kimbo. Me too, Granny. I'd love to hear that rascal play the mouth bowl. I bet they have a square dance that'll shake the hills. With old Chick Allen and the bald knobbers playing the music. Ah! Swing it, but we run all. Swing it, but we run the hall. Swing it, but we run the hall. I got from your mom? No, from the president. The president of what? The president of the whole country. You got a letter from Jeff Davis? <laughs> Daddy, I keep telling you, he ain't the president. <laughs> I don't get into that scrap. Let me see, boy. My dog is his right, Granny. It says, uh, the president of the United States to Jethro Bodine greetings. <laughs> what does he want with Jethro? He wants me to join the armed forces and fight for my country. Can I join too, Paul? Well, he didn't invite you. He just invited me. Well, I can fight better than you. You can't neither. Uh -huh. I can't too. Can't. 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 That's enough for that. Uh, according to this, Jethro, uh, you ain't got but a few days to report. Yeah, next Friday. Well, you'll be driving us to the festival next Friday. Now you go in there, call the president, and tell him you're too busy. Now wait. <laughs> if he was kind enough to send greetings and a personal invite, the boy ought to show up on time. Well, how are we gonna get to Silver Dollar City? I'll call Miss Jane, have her put you and Ellie on the airplane. Why aren't you coming, Pop? 
I think I'd best stay and see Jethro gets into the army proper. You mean Ellie and me ain't gonna have no men folks to protect us? You don't need no protection. Jed, have you forgot what kind of men come up from them hollers at festival time? Why, even a woman at my age ain't safe from them bold rascals. Why, they's liable to grab me and kiss me and... Let's go call Miss Jane. <laughs> She's likely to want to go with us. Jethro is joining the army? Well, he's received his induction notice. Well, don't worry. I've got some friends in the draft board. I'll call and use my influence. I'll make sure they take him. <laughs> in the first place, Jethro is anxious to serve his country. He's just trying to decide which branch of the service to apply for. I was in the quartermaster corps myself. Made sergeant. Ran a little lending service on the side. <laughs> you never saw combat, did you? Me? I went through some of the bloodiest fighting of the war. Got shot at a dozen times. But you never went overseas. When you lend money to soldiers at 40%, you don't have to. <laughs> <laughs> ah, Mr. Clampett. Howdy. Miss Jane, I put the women folks and the suitcases in your car. I sure do appreciate this. My pleasure, Mr. Clampett. Are you going back to the hills with them? Well, they did invite me, but it's really up to Mr. Drysdale. Oh, I'd love for her to go, but it would cost me $300 a week to replace her. $300? Is it my fault you do the work for women? Certainly is. <laughs> well, Mr. Clampett, are you coming to the airport with us? Well, no, thank you. I got to talk money with Mr. Drysdale. Oh, yes. Well, you, you run along. <laughs> well, going to deposit a little money, eh? You no, know, I'm going to draw some out. Oh, it's a beautiful drive to the airport. <laughs> I know it is, but I need some money for Jethro. Oh, I see a little pocket money for the soldier boy. Well, I'll take care of that. Now, let's see. His allowance is 50 cents a week, right? That's right, but I... And you want to give him a raise, reward him for his patriotism. That's a good idea. Let's show him how proud we are of him. We'll give him 60 cents a week. <laughs> what I have in mind... Now, now, don't, don't overdo it. After all, the government pays his expenses and gives him a handsome salary besides. Yeah, I heard tell it costs the government thirty-five or $40,000 to train and equip each boy. Right. Of course, in Jethro's case, it'll cost more. They have to feed him. <laughs> Reckon 50000 to cover it? Oh, I think so. Okay, that's what I want to draw out. <laughs> <laughs> you told me that the government up in Washington was hurting for money and deep in debt. <laughs> yes, but... Well, I can't let the government pay for Jethro when I got all them millions just laying here in your bank. <laughs> but you just... You, you, people... Oh, you just... Can't. Hey, Jed! Well, that's Jethro back from the studio. He went over there to look at all the different uniforms. In here, boy. He figured that would help him decide which branch of the service to join. <laughs> How do you like it? It's a dandy iron hat. You get your cornered, you can butt your way out. <laughs> Jethro, that's the uniform of a Prussian field marshal. Hot dog! <laughs> if you show up at the induction center wearing that, they'll think... I, I like it. It's great. Now go right over. And when you walk in, give it this. <laughs> Tell them Bismarck sent you. I ain't decided on this one for sure. I got a whole bunch of other uniforms. Well, let's see them, boy. Oh, yes, sir. Oh, you wait right here now. Hey, <laughs> Logan, look at them pistols. Ain't they something? Well, this is the kind of uniform old blood and guts wore. Who? General Patton. He's my hero. A fighting fool. Rode around in a great big old tank. How do you like it, Mr. Drysdale? Fine, fine. They'll put him right in Section 8. Is that good? A lot of men try for it. <laughs> Dandy. Looks like you're all set, boy. Oh, no, not until I get my tank. Oh, that's right. Uh, you better make that 100000 <laughs> well, I said I ain't going to let the government pay Jethro's bill. Uh, go get yourself the best tank money can buy. <laughs> hey, what's he crying about? Sorry to see you go, all right. <laughs> well, how do you like? Not small, eh? It looks like you got the run of the litter. <laughs> well, I think I'll start with this one. Then when I got the hang of him on the tank, give me one of them great big rascals. Great fair sized weapon on this little tank. Make a dandy goose gun. <laughs> yeah, that rascal. Really reach out and bring him down. What are you shooting? Well, I couldn't buy no shells, but I got a hold of some blasting powder. 
I figure I'd muzzle odor and tamp in some rocks. <laughs> Don't shoot it around the neighborhood. These city folks is even jumpy about my squirrel gun. <laughs> Us tank generals drives mostly through fields and woods and such. I'd stay out of downtown Beverly Hills if I was you. Yes, sir. <laughs> figure the best woods is up in Griffith Park. Ain't that where you played Robin Hood? Yes, sir. But I done I'd grow that kind of stuff. <laughs> well, you got until Friday to practice driving and shooting. Well, I sure could use some help in there. Kate, how about you being my crew? I don't know nothing about them gadgets, boy. But you could be a Prussian field marshal. I got the uniforms right there in the day. <laughs> oh, thanks. I'll call Mr. Drive, dear. Maybe he can help you find a crew. Okay. <laughs> Nut. <laughs> I have a heart. If the army finds out that Jethro is idiotic enough to impersonate a general, then they'll never take him. Right. Now go report to your commanding officer. <laughs> Thank you for reporting for duty, sir. Well, Miss Jane, you're a woman. Thank you. That's the nicest thing that's been said to me all day. What's the problem here? You having trouble with a soldier? You can be shot for disobeying a general. It ain't that. I can't have a woman in my tank. You want people to think I'm a nut? Certainly not. Then you be my crew. But I'm not in uniform. There's plenty of uniforms in the tank. You can be a Prussian field marshal. Now, come on, hop in. I'm not going. Are you disobeying a general? Okay, okay. It's, it's just a short trip. That's what you think. We's going to Griffith Park. Oh, sure, sure. Just make a right turn as you go through the gate. <laughs> we ain't going through the gate. We's going out the back way and cut across country. <laughs> general, I mean general. What? Nothing. <laughs> Nothing. You and the field marshal have a nice trip. <laughs> <Thank you. Machine, eh? Yes. Hello? Yes, ma'am, this is Jed Clamp. Long distance? Pearl, how are you? Did Granny and Ellie May get there all right? Yeah, cut. Yeah, cut. The Jed, the three of us is just fixing to leave for the festival. <laughs> I sure wish you and Jethro was here. Me too, Pearl, but I reckon Granny told you about Jethro. Yeah. She says Jethro's been offered a job by the government. <laughs> no, she didn't say what kind of job. But... Just a minute, Ted. Alberta Bradshaw, you get off this line. I know you're there, I hear you breathing. And I ain't gonna have you blabbing to everybody in these hills who I'm talking to, so hang up. <laughs> After all, what I got to say to my rich cousin, Jed in California, who lives in a mansion in Beverly Hills and has $70 million in the bank and just got back from his castle in England where he's known as the Earl of Clampett, <laughs> is none of your business. Well, now, Pearl, uh, get back to Jethro. Oh, yeah, Jed. I want to hear all about that fine government job my big, handsome son with the sixth-grade Beverly Hills education is going to... Verna Bradshaw, that is the rudest thing I ever heard tell of. What'd she do, Pearl? She hung up. <laughs> Pearl, the men is streaming by your house on the way to the festival. I'm talking to Cousin Jade on the telephone. Oh, Pearl, they're coming up out of the holler by droves. Big, old, good-looking rascals. <laughs> you want to say hello? Hello? Hello, I'm there. <laughs> I mean to Cousin Jed on the telephone. Hello, Cousin Jed. <laughs> Will you come over here? Oh, all right. Ellie, you go out on the porch and slow them down. Now smile real pretty. Try and break their stride. They's walking too fast. Yes, yes. Ellie, honey, your paw's on the phone. Say howdy to him. Oh, oh yes, my pa. Oh, here comes that good-looking Walter McKeegan. Walter! Will you stay away from Walter McKeegan? He's mine. <laughs> Uh -huh. Howdy, Ellie. Sounds like Granny and Pearl's after the same fella. Yes, sir. They's fighting out front. I best go help the loser. Who's losing? 
Mr. McKagan. <laughs> All right, honey, you all have a good time now. And tell Pearl not to worry about Jethro. He's doing just fine. <laughs> Come on, let's get a breath of fresh air and then we'll have target practice. Ah! Watch that, Von Hindenburg! <laughs> Sorry, General. <laughs> I wouldn't want to be in here. Ah! Tony split up these wild reports from Griffith Park, like seeing Robin Hood. But we saw him, Charlie. I swear it. Just like you see these tank tracks, huh? Yeah. Well, that could be a bulldozer. They're cutting fire roads all over here. But the park ranger said he saw the tank. Get me that clown on the horn. Come out, go to him. You know, they shouldn't leave those fellas alone up in those towers for so long. Gets to him. Okay, Charlie, you're patched into the Ranger. Thanks. Hi. How are you? <laughs> say, about the report. What's that you say you're looking at? A man in uniform, in a, in a small boat, crossing the water, about to be shot at. <laughs> Tell me, is General Washington standing up, or is he... Oh, oh, a German field marshal <laughs> in the boat. Huh? Looks like... Von Hindenburg. <laughs> Tell me, isn't your tower quite a long distance from the lake? Oh, you've got your glasses. Uh, what's in the glasses? <laughs> oh, oh, okay, okay, no, no offense. Now, uh, tell me more about the tank you claim you saw. Oh, that's what's just about to shoot at Von Hindenburg. I, see. I, I didn't get that. Well, who's driving the tank? General Patton. <laughs> And now he's putting mud and rocks into the barrel of the gun and tamping him down with a broomstick. I see. <laughs> now, now, look, you, you just sit tight and we're going to have you airlifted out of this. <laughs> Man, he has really gone eight. <laughs> he was right about Robin Hood. Oh, come on, Fred. Von Hindenburg in a boat, General Patton in a tank, getting ready to shoot at him. <laughs> Let's get an air medic in a helicopter and... Carbonite, carbonite! <laughs> the one that Patton carried pistols. Shooting that cannon off is murder. <laughs> okay, now you see that stump across the lake down by the water there? Yes. Well, that's your target. My target? I'm not going to shoot this thing. Are you fixing to desert again? No, no, no. Okay, well, then you get in there and button up. I'm going to get in the boat, row across the lake, and see how good you do. Yeah, you do that. Clear across, then hide behind some trees. <laughs> Where? Right through those trees. My golly, it is a tank. Come on. <laughs> it's 
von Hindenburg. Yeah. Guten Tag, Herr Field Marshal. All right, come on out. Come see out, schnell. <laughs> come and see here, Herr Hindenburg. <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm not, I'm not Hindenburg. Hey, that's the nut was playing Robin Hood. Really? <laughs> and he, he'll claim that he's president of the Commerce Bank of Beverly Hills. <laughs> Don't let this uniform fool you. I'm president of the Commerce Bank of Beverly Hills. <laughs> yeah, und ich bin Kaiser Wilhelm. Was gibt es Neues? I'll show you. Hey, Charlie. Where did you learn to spreck in the Deutsch? I was parachuted behind the German lines, was captured, and spent six months in a prison camp. I thought you were in the Quartermaster Corps. I was, but I had to transfer to the paratroops for more pay. How come? Well, I borrowed a couple of hundred bucks from this Quartermaster Sergeant. That Shylock charged me 40% interest compounded semi-daily. <laughs> semi-daily? Uh, he had his hooks in me, but good. Hounded me day and night. <laughs> See, fellas. I'm not von Hindenburg. In fact, I'm an ex-GI, a veteran. Really? I was a sergeant in the Quartermaster Corps. Hey, I was in the Quartermaster Corps. <laughs> well, I was at Fort MacArthur. I was at Fort MacArthur, too. <laughs> How about that? Yeah. I borrowed some money from a sergeant called Dracula Drysdale. <laughs> You did? Uh, looked a lot like you. I don't believe I caught your name. Von Hindenburg. I've been hiding in Argentina for 50 years. <laughs> crew deserted me. I'm going to turn this thing in and get the truck back. You drop me off at the sheriff? Oh, sure. Come on, hop in. I got to take $2,500. Well, what for? Well, $500 is for Mr. Drysdale's bail. And $2,000 is what he owes. Boy, I ought to shoot that Mr. Drysdale. If we don't get this money down there, there's a fellow named Charlie going to...